This is going to be review number three. We're going to take a look at graphing. So we're going to review the input output process. This is going to help us graph. We're going to examine constructing any graph. We don't even know what it have to look like and we can at least sketch something of what it could look like. We're going to take a look at the X and Y intercepts and the fundamental graphing principle. So let's start with the fundamental graphing principle. All it states is the graph and equation is the set of points which satisfy the equation. That is a point x, y is on the graph of an equation if and only if x and y satisfy the equation. Now, when I use that phrase x and y satisfy the equation, all it means is it makes it true. So whatever the value of x and y is, if you would plug it in, you just need to make it true. So let's kind of look of an example on that. So let's determine whether or not 2 and negative 1 is going to be on the graph of x squared plus y to the third equals 1. Now you're probably thinking, you're like, whoa, that's a graph? Yeah, that, that actually could create and represent a graph. And throughout this class and pre-calculus, you know, we're going to be learning various methods and how we can model things like that. But first, let's just determine whether or not 2, negative 1 is actually on the graph. And the way you do that is you just plug it in. So we're going to take that point, we're going to plug it in. So I plugged 2 in for x, I plugged in negative 1 in for y, and I want to see, is it true? If it's true, it's on the graph. If it's false, it's not on the graph. So that's 4, negative 1 cubed is negative 1. 4 and negative 1 gives me 3. 3 does not equal 1, therefore it's false. So I can conclude that the point 2, negative 1 is not on the graph of x squared plus y cubed equals 1. It's not on there. So instead of just spending all of this time guessing to see which points work on the graph, there is actually a method to the madness in being able to find where the points exist. And so we're going to use this idea of the input-output process. And so to do that, you solve for y. Solving just means get the value by itself. So we want to get y or y by itself. So if this is my equation. The first thing I can do is I can subtract the x squared. So I'm going to subtract that on both sides. And so I get y cubed equals 1 minus x squared. And then to cancel out that cube, you could take the cube root to both sides. And so we get y equals the cube root of 1 minus x squared. Now that it's by itself, the y value, what I can do is I can start plugging in values for x to find the y. So for example, if I took negative 3, we get to choose it. I get to choose negative 3. You as the mathematician get to choose negative 3. You could choose negative 2, 1, 5, 100, million. You choose the value, and so you plug it in. And so I decided to choose negative 3, and I plugged it in. Now I just need to simplify it. So negative 3 squared, okay, so that's positive 9. So 1 minus positive 9, cube root of negative 8, that's going to be negative 2. So the point is going to be negative 3, negative 2. And that value is on the graph. So I could actually go through this entire process and I could pick a bunch of x values. I started with that negative 3 and I got negative 2. You could just go in order. Make it easy on yourself. Just create a chart, pick the values, take those values, plug them in, and then what ends up happening, you can go ahead and start getting values that you can plot on the graph. Right? And then once you have enough values, now that's important. Once you have enough values, then you can go through and make a sketch of it. So just remember, these points only constitute a small sampling of all those points on the equation. So using a graphing utility may be a better idea to see what it could look like. And that's okay. If it's like, okay, I have this, I think this is what's going to look like, I think this is going to go on forever that way, and it looks like that's probably going to go on forever that way, you know, if you entered this into your graphing calculator, you could take a look at what it looks like, and you can be like, okay, yep, I got it, I'm good to go.
But remember, you want to pick enough points so you get the entire picture of what it should look like. The next piece to here is we're going to examine the x and y intercepts. And so a point on the graph, which is on the x-axis, we call that an x-intercept. And a point on the graph, which we call that's on the y-axis, we call that a y-intercept. And so here's an example. If I had a line and it crossed through the 3 on the y-axis, that is my y-intercept. If it crossed here on the x-axis, that is my x-intercept. Now notice how I described it. A point on a graph, which is on the x-axis, we call that point the x-intercept. We describe our x-intercepts as points. So if I were to say my x-intercept is x equals 2, yes, I know where to look for it at 2, but that is not the correct descriptor. We want to describe it as points. That's important. So how do we find the x-intercept? How do we find the y-intercept? So to find them, x-intercepts have this form of x0. Your y value is always 0. So you're going to set y equals to 0 and then get x by itself. Your y-intercepts are always in this form, 0y. So your x is 0. So you're going to set your x equal to 0 in the equation and get y by itself. So in this graph that we already took a look at, just by looking at it, I can determine that these two values here are my x-intercepts and this value here is my y-intercept. Negative 1, 0 and 1, 0 are my x-intercepts and 0, 1 is my y-intercept. So let's graph this and let's find the x and y-intercept. So to graph it, what we want to do is we want to get x or y by itself. That is the first thing. So I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides. So I get 4 minus 2x. Now, once it's by itself, then we can pick our, make our table. Now, we should be able to look at this by now and be like, oh, this is a line. It should look like a line. So when you go to sketch it, if it's starting to look like a line, you're good to go. So you know, I'll pick some values, negative 1, 0, 1. So if I plug in negative 1, 4 minus 2 times negative 1, that's 2. 4 plus 2, that's going to give me 6. If I plug in 0, 4 minus 0. If I plug in 1, 4 minus 2. And so I can go through and plot this. So at negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. At 0, it's 4. And at 1, it's 2. And so do the best I can to connect those, but that right there is the line. Now, because it's just a sketch, I'm already going to tell you, me looking at this graph, this is technically supposed to be my y or my x-intercept right here. So we have to be careful of that. If you draw it absolutely correctly, you have a ruler, you're able to go through and connect everything correctly, you know then go ahead and look at the graph. But if you're just doing the sketch like I did, and I didn't use a ruler, I just tried to do the best I can to connect them, you might be off. So to find the x and y intercepts, to find the x intercept, we said y equals zero. So I just plug in zero for y. Two x plus zero equals four. Get x by itself. X equals two. So my x intercept is going to be two, zero. My y-intercept. We set x equal to zero. So I want to plug in zero for x. So two times zero is zero. Zero plus y equals four. So my y-intercept is going to be zero, four. And we can verify that. Right on my graph, there's zero, four, and there's two, zero. Next one. So let's graph this. Y is by itself, so we're good. So now that Y is by itself, I can sit there and I could draw my chart. And negative 1, 0, and 1. So if I plugged in negative 1, so that's just going to give me, let's see, 1 minus 4 plus 4, so that's 1. If I plug in 0, that gives me. 4. 
if I plug in 1, 1 plus 4 plus 4, that's going to give me 9. So doing a quick sketch here, so at negative 1, it's 1. And then at 0, it's 4. And then at 1, it's 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Woo! Okay. Well, I know because of that square, that's not a line. But what I have so far, I don't know what that looks like. That's kind of weird. So I need to pick more points. Maybe I should try negative 2. Because it looks like it's just going to keep going up that way, so I kind of have the pattern. But I have no idea what's happening on that side. So start picking points on that side. So if I plug in negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, plus 4 times negative 2, plus 4. So that's going to be 0. Oh. Then if I plug in negative 3, you're going to get 1. If you plug in negative 4, now I'm not doing the math, I'm just going a little quicker. You're going to get 4. And so now we have that shape. So when in doubt, plug in more points. Now I just want to quickly show this. You can go ahead and graph it, but we have to get y by itself. And so we can multiply both sides by x to do that. And so I'm going to get y equals 4x squared. And then you can go through, you can create your chart and do all that stuff. Now, there is something else that's special with this. It's the fact that we divided by x. We're not going to talk about that yet. That's into the future. So we're not going to worry about that right now. The point being is that I want to be able to go through and do that. Now, going back to this previous problem here, let's find the x and y intercept. So to find the x intercept, we have to set y equal to 0. So this is 0 equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. Huh, interesting. That looks like the factoring problems we've been doing yesterday. So if I were to factor this, and then I could say x equals negative 2. And so my x-intercept is going to be negative 2, 0. Now my y-intercept, right? I have to plug in 0 for x. And so if I do that, that's going to be a 0 that's going to be 0, and so I get y equals 4, and so my y-intercept is going to be 0, 4. So what did we learn today? We talked about how to graph, the fundamental graphing principle. We took a look at the x and y-intercepts and examined how to construct a graph, right? And the idea that we may have to pick more points to see and make sure that the shape is correct. So how can you graph an equation? You want to make sure y is by itself. That's really important. You have to have it in the form y equals, and then you pick the x values. You pick the x's. Da, 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 da. All right. What are the x and y intercepts? That's where the x intercept is where it crosses the x axis. The y intercept is where it crosses the y axis. This does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.